Hello there everyone and welcome back to us playing as the United States, as you probably know by now. But we're tracking the Enclave, or Texclave, <coughs> for years, since the fall of Navarro. There's been another Texas legend, the legend of the Colonel Sam Houston V, who led a dissident Enclave group to Texas to rebel after that devastating battle. Well, we may have no way of knowing, since the records went down with the rig, it's probably a bastardized tale of the group that fled east of Raven Rock with Dr. Autumn. However, a few of her soldiers in the form of Pecos Colony found evidence of a previous Enclave force that had passed through. Tales, another tale, tale of Texas. Why does that name sound familiar? <coughs> no Arizona killers in America. In a shocking turn of events, the Western White House in New Reno was the site of a running gun battle between the Secret Service and the United States military and several would-be assassins that have been determined to be actors of Kaiser's fearful Frumentari. The botched event happened when a custodial staff body was discovered in the closet and security was promptly alerted to the event. In a last-ditch attempt at killing the leader of the free world, the assassins assaulted the Oval Office before being gunned down by none other than the President, supporting sporting power armor and wielding a Gatling gun. Images depicting the President leading troops in battle once again has sent shockwaves across the nation and reinvigorated many patriots to the American cause. Stri stars and stripes beats Legion Bull. Even more attack and stability, because why not? So, right now we're waiting to go to war with the Washington Brotherhood. We're really waiting for them to go to war with us because they don't like us. And that's okay. We're getting more ciphers and, or ciphers, puppets and whatnot, and annexing them eventually. The Texas Arms Association, Texas Guns. And what was the RRG's problem now has become our problem. The Texas Arms Association was one of the largest third party weapon manufacturers in the pre war era. <coughs> they managed to survive the Great War simply by having more guns than anyone else, of course. Having all those guns meant they sold the guns to everyone else. And post war, a line of the RRG as their largest buyer of weapons. While many within the TAA still wish to sell weapons, they have zero intention of allowing them. We have zero intention of allowing them the same kind of freedom that the RRG was forced to accept. <coughs> so, because we have more guns than them, of course, that leaves the residents of the state, which it is its own city by this point. They can have the factory, that's it. <coughs> Excuse me. Further store of Lackland Air Force Base. Was once the center for Air Force basic training. Um, given the need of a growing Air Force, we have such a need of an installation again. Barsdale, Barksdale Air Force Base. Our southern strategic strike base, while since fallen in disrepair, its positions fought off our operations further east. Further our support. Cool. And we're going to come down here and do oh, Liberty Chasseur. The Air Force fallen in the Great War took a hard hit. Hit harder than anyone else. Even the Navy had the Pacific Fleet for a time, but the Air Force lost nearly every single aircraft in its arsenal that made it the mightiest Air Force in the world at the time. All other men, there were the vertebrate station on the rig, which became the backbone of the Air Force, <clears throat> and the workhorse of the Enclave. Now, however, time to change. Air Force is ready to restore its old power and more, making more than a few flights of vertebrates flying over the West End. They, while they haven't forgotten the venerable vertebrate, the priorities have shifted somewhat. One of those is a, a revival of the Air Industry Command, which Air Force commanders hope will compete, catapult the Air Force ahead from a simple prop monoplanes to the mighty nuclear jet fires of the pre-war era. Likewise, Air Force is ready to start a program to return fixed-wing aircraft to the skies. We have resources for all three, but now it's time. But it's time that is of the essence now. We're gonna have a lot of battle barges. We got one of these two. Go. Uh, get our workhorses back into the air. Our workhorse. Love well, our industry command. Get our birds back in the air. Oh, which one do we have? Our workhorse. The backbone of our Air Force. The key to return to the mainland. However, the expense is somewhat unreliable. Perhaps it's time to see if we can fix that. Air industry command. Overseeing aircraft design. Development, construction, deployment. Subject to heavy oversight to ensure that the taxpayers' money is spent on what's needed and not lining pockets. Return to the fixed wings. While tilt rotor aircraft have been main, our mainstay since we return, fixed wing aircraft will pick up the slack where the expensive and delicate vertebrates will be too costly to send. Robot assailants. Our technicians will get more done of mundane tasks. We're set aside robots who can follow simple protocols and procedures. Should be nice. Aerial mech droids. Why should we limit ourselves to the robots on the ground? Equipping our aircraft with single repair bots that can fix and troubleshoot uh, during combat go a long way to keeping our planes up in the air. <clears throat> Munitions depot. Oh god. Our pilots need bullets, bombs, and energy cells. Setting aside depots to construct these weapons of war will go a long way to keeping our fighters, fighters put, putting warheads on foreheads. Jury rigging. While it's never replacing a full service, technicians in combat zones should be rewarded for keeping planes in the air. Even if it means hooking wires where there shouldn't normally be. Fort Hood. Uh, the Holy Grail of Texas, Fort Hood, was a massive center for the power arm pre, uh, production pre-war, and the brother split itself into two trying to get into the fort. Whether to document and protect the fort or use its facilities in the fledging or provisional republic of Texas, the various expeditions that the Brotherhood took to try and secure the base left a pile of broken robot bo husks, dead bodies, and more than the base's fair share of post-war battle scars for us. It was easy once we set in our presidential codes to shut down the various automated defenses, which we since dismantled for the time being. We sent the fort facilities uh, to begin pumping out power armor, for which any future conflict with the Brotherhood will give us an edge far above them. Man, thank God we have the presidential codes. No. 
dies. Figure out what's going on at the corpse. Well, it used to be called Corpus Christi Naval Base, our only naval base in the Gulf. Now it goes by another name. There's a weird structure to sitting in the center of the harbor. We're not really sure what the heck is going on here. On the sunken remains of the Corpus Christi, naval base is another set of remains of a strange green citadel filled to the brim with rotting plants and other strange flora. The Navy's hopes of restoring our Mexican Gulf naval base quickly have been dashed, as well as from damage from a massive hurricane that's ravaged the Texas coast, which is pretty normal. Between that and the aforementioned citadel repairs, it's going to take more time than usual for this one. Demolition teams armed with flamethrowers and incinerators are not route as we speak. Uh, what's going on here? Mr. T Entertainment. Uh, KXLL station was attempted by the Federal Communications Commission to ignite hatred against communism and buy more American products by subliminal means. Sadly, it was never applied on mass scale thanks to the Great War cutting plans short. And Mr. Entertainment, an enigmatic fellow who found the all old equipment and has been slowly spreading his influence across the waste. Now, when we confronted him about it, we claimed he was only doing it for the betterment of the people. Point of the lower levels of violence in the areas where his TVs are set up, of course. He has graciously given over studio equipment and team and his own charms to assist us in recreating America. Let's find nothing to worry about. Let me get more sport. Take out the pests. Mind control, keep the rest. Only the government can control minds. We can use it to reprogram raiders in the Legion. The black literally will never go wrong. Hmm. I'm gonna go with that one. We can use still more war sport. Uh, where are the doggos? I want more doggos. This is easy to do. There you go. Air Industry Command. Houston has a problem. <clears throat> I know I said I wanted to let me pair drop into these guys, like the Brotherhood, but like still. Navarro Dry Dock. Dry Dock. The Navy's installing the latest and repair and fit technologies here. At Navarro allowing your ships to be returned to the fight all the faster. No, uh, Houston, you got a problem. The Houston itself, while a massive port city that's vital for both economic expansion um, and production, he held in the jewel of the USSA. It's, it's headquarters. Going in, we expect another derelict ruin, possibly overrun by raiders and mocking irony instead. The entire complex was in relatively good condition, and the schematics and technologies left over from before the war were still intact. This is thanks in large part that the Houston governing body was descended from the USSA, and kept the place in order all this time. With Bloomfield in Arizona and, here, and now here in Houston, we now have yet more opportunities to explore space around our planet and perhaps even beyond. We have liftoff, so have more impact in the later updates. Can Houston I presume? We just got work uh, from units near El Paso. Colonel Sam Houston V and his forces have been found. They've been hiding in a derelict vault for the past couple of years, slowly rebuilding their numbers. They're quite surprised to see all Cliff troops walking around, even more searching for them. And Clem to his body saw operations to begin his own campaign, similar to ours. Just that the starting conditions weren't right. We also found evidence that they might have taken up raiding against some of the local towns, but the evidence is anecdotal at best. Having himself been forced to take and waste Americans with both his own troop numbers, he is on board with the reformist ways and is eager to return to active service re recreating America. His forces have joined us as well, bolstering on forces in Texas, one of whom is Colonel Callahan's brother, whom the two shared a happy reunion. All right, enough of the text clip. Nice. What do we got here? Wind farmer fans, cowboys. Wind farmers, cool. Welcome aboard. Even though I'd rather prefer you to become a number power armor, but whatever. Um, Mexico Reclamation Zone. We can support the opponents of Santa by providing them with a nominal independent territory from which to harass the general better them than us. Baja Blue. It's been all peninsula. was spared the worst of the Enclave's conquest. With the little valley that occupied as NCR has already collapsed and the Enclave's liberation passes sleepy towns and villages by. Rangers rightly skip Al Almiron was of such a little note that the Enclave only sent a request that he surrendered for processing by courier. Needless to say, they declined. And so Almiron was even surprised to get a request from the president to oversee the Mexican reclamation zone designed to support those fleeing Santa Ana's conquest. But really, who else was going to do it? Honestly, we just like his music. So we can give Melbourne, Mexico, Juarez, or give Juarez all of Mexico. Of course, there's a shattered state. It's fine, whatever. We haven't built our sections of Mexico that much anyway, so. Not super concerned. The Mexican reclamation. We could return the rest of the lands of Mexico if we wanted to. Sort of a fix for those who want to recreate Mexico. The true edge of Cito, Mexico, approach the Baron. The Baron may be a son of a bitch, but ideally he'll be our son of a bitch. And so am I, so sick of Nuka Cola. Oh, there you go. Um, Navarro Navy Yard. The Navarro Navy Yard will be one of the most advanced in the wasteland, far more efficient than the ones we've been refurbishing in our other pre war bases. Econ economic aid to these guys. Um, providing economic assistance to the Mexican Reclamation Zone. Well, because of a boost our image among the Mexican resistance. Huh. Improve the infrastructure. I'd rather just build them then. Humanitarian relief to Mexican reclamation zone. Fence it online. Fantastic. There you go. 
Ah, Bayou Motors joins us, joins us, annex them. We're gonna have to go to war with the Heaven's Gate to get them under us. That's fantastic. Uh, Marine Barracks. The Marine Barracks will house the Marine Contingent of Navarro, as well as Hardpoint for protection of naval assets on the base. Combat stimulants? Nice. I love stimulants. Oh, we don't have enough steel for that, huh? That's a lot of steel. Holy crap. Test the cannons. Nice. Rapidly discharging ammo. Overcharged ammo. Let's go. Rapidly discharging. What is this? Advanced power armor. Mark what do we have? I'm not sure why those are there. Whatever. Gatling lasers. Darn, we can't upgrade those even further. Darn it. That would be nice, though. Cyrus becomes a federal commonwealth, sure. Marine barracks. Uh, uh, Navarro hangar, another expansion plan by the Air Force meant to increase the size of the Air Force at, or airfield in Navarro. Same day now, she go to war with us, right? United American Brotherhood. Further store China like NAS, NAWS. The large naval weapons research and development side on the West Coast and something the NCR overlooks so foolishly. For Laughlin Air Force Base, former training base. Uh, they turned into our main strike and base against Mexican terrorists when we conducted peacekeeping operations there. Ah, we got it almost there. And also a couple of white tea or two. Alright, part of the army. Pre-war, Fort Polk, was infamous for being hot, muggy, bug-written, and miserable. Post-war, it's all those things, but with extra adage of a mutated swamp thrown in for good measure. Even the gator maws avoided Polk. Skull and bone charms hanging from trees, rusting robots occasionally power up as their centuries-old systems occasionally spark to life. What's more, the place is rumored to be haunted by Ger Geronimo, the remnants of the U.S. Army 509th Infantry Regiment. However, they haven't heard from in, in oh, for um, over a hundred years. Um, and frankly, we can put the old base to use. The upcoming uh, swamp jungle warfare that will dominate the Gulf Coast. I should have bogged our troops down with Polk under our control. We can begin training troops to manage warfare in what to many, or what too many, is an alien environment. Just watch out for the blood bugs. Ugh. Disgusting. So we can almost ask these guys. Suicide pills, nice. Yummy. Barrel hanger. Cool. Cool. Um, Colorado Line, let's see how the Legion fares against the defense inspired by the Anchorage Reclamation. This war, this isn't war, it's pest control. Air training simulator. Start a state of the art VR training center that allow our pilots to conduct operations against the peer level Air Force as well as develop tactics to be able to handle more antiquated Air Force, waste and Air Forces that are popping up all over the place these days. Well, radar. Modern expansive radar installation. It will be able to see far beyond in the Pacific and into the Northwest and even keep an eye on things approaching San Francisco. Stand at the gate of Heaven's Gate. From the mountains of Utah come with Crusader Faith and team. Their leader says they have God's blessing. Doesn't he know? God bless the Uncle and no one else. Operation Damocles. Volpus and Colt, there remains a threat unlike anything we faced yet, and his Frumentari are without a doubt the most potent, potent intelligence organization in the wasteland. And Colonel Callan's going to dismantle it, and to do so, he's going to write for the fox's head, even though the fox is dead. It's alright. Hey, look at that. Oh, they're attacking us over here. I knew they'd attack us eventually somewhere here, but. So their power armor versus our power armor. We can't pierce each other. And he's level 1 versus 8. <clears throat> well, you can try. Oh, God. Missile launchers, nice. Cyber doggos. Fantastic. I lost already a thousand. Jesus Christ, that's insane. Oh, yeah. How much manpower do they have to start? Because we do have our ciphers. 3,000 manpower, huh? 150, that's a lot of divisions. 154 is quite a bit. How's the Navy doing? I call them all in. I don't care. My navy should be decent too. Look at the air XP go up though. Three day. It's beautiful. Oh god, there's a lot of lag. What's going on? Oh, that's, that's, that's you. Oh crap, that's not good. Where you guys at? Shnikes, I left you guys over there in Mexico. Okay. I think White Claws would be good expansion, tar expansion target next, probably. And heavens get cool. Are 
go. Oh, and probably adding someone else to it right now. What else we got? Repair, human drive, boost. Go to the store, mountain home, air force base, pre war fighter base. It operated alongside MacArthur Air Force Base at a defensive net against the Chinese fighters and bombers coming in from Alaska during the resource wars. Arctic systems. Now with the broad of measure of peace and stability of the wasteland, people can consider our consider commerce that spans kindness once again. Once again. It's secured its code of liberty. More time to wrap, and we're good. God, how many dogs are we making? I don't know, here, well, I'm here. I'm guess. What's the issue? Alright, we're going in. They've only lost 4,000, but still. Air wise, they've quite a bit, but only 400, and our guys are just better. Holy shnikes! 44 losses in the past month? 33? Oh, we're demolishing their Air Force. Oh, God. That is the most efficient Air Force I've ever had so far I've ever seen my time playing Hoi 4. Jesus, just ripping them apart. I love it. AFN News from the front, let's see you Portland. This is Rick Green, and I'm bringing updates from Portland. Well, fighting continues in the north as the United States troops enter Portland. The Washington brother continues to mount a stiff resistance, fortifying any crossing. Points across Columbia River, power armor class with power armor in the streets. While troops on both sides engage in fierce urban combat. As the streets of the city of Rose is run, run city with run red with blood. You can only wonder which side will bleed more by the end of the day. The City of Roses bleeds. As it should. As it will. As we will want it to. You will bleed. Ask yeah, screw it. I need you guys over here too. There you go. I'm not super worried for that. Another naval battle up here too. Almost 600,000 manpower. It's fantastic. Do you guys have orders? Oh. You port mall. Okay, too. They attack us, we attack them. You know, we just continue shredding them. Just, oh. We basically don't, we lose maybe an occasional guy, but we literally just destroyed the entire Air Force. Right there. That is amazing. Hey, 15 divisions, not bad. Goodbye. Welcome back into the fold, everybody. Oh, here you go. Help them out. Nice. I guess Port Mall is good. Weapons of the old world, Naval Air Station's China Lake was once a hotbed of naval weapons development and design. It was instrumental in allowing the United States to maintain surface co sea control. Just prior to the Great War, with the weapons developed here, after the Great War, it became a hot bombed out husk, and many of its underground facilities were caved in and lost. Regardless, the Navy's eager to get back to base full capacity and restore our status as the mightiest Navy in the world. Nothing more than shooting pirates on the Emerald Seas. Freedom Holy, Fort Sam Houston. If the Alamo chapter wasn't too busy scurrying San Antonio for weapons or weapons that put people in hospitals, um, they would have realized that they were sitting on the center of the U.S. Army hospitals. Uh, Fort Sam Houston was a command center for the U.S. Army Medical Command and is a treasure trove of medical information and technology. Every major Ameri Army medical development leading up to the Great War was developed and processed through these halls, and the data here can be put to port to save thousands of American troops, of course. Uh, it almost seems like <clears throat> uh, ironic that the Alamo chapter was bleeding dry at the Alamo, and what could have kept them in the fight was sitting right here in San Antonio. San Antonio just keeps on giving. What this cause? Where the store of Laughlin Air Force Base, course. More cores. Hmm. We're gonna keep going on him. You know, oh, I broke broken because god dang it, that sucks. I'm actually gonna send you guys down south because these guys are just massive. You guys do that, and there you go. Uh, power armor. Um, what do we got here? 
We're going to continue beating them up, but I might actually pair drop from here into the Broken Coast territory. That might be the best just to delete them as quickly as possible. Arc Jet Systems. Attempting to recreate the success of the Lockheed School out west, the present administration has likewise set up a similar school out east with former ArcJet systems. Despite the east coast being nowhere near as civilized or advanced as the west, there's been a surprising number of applicants both engineering and with electrical knowledge, which has made the creation of the school all the easier. Many have even noted that aircraft engineering is simply easier or simpler than electrical wiring and construction of settlements in the east, something that even our engineers are having issues grasping. Why is the settlement system so hard? AFN News and the Oregon Pirate Era. The Pirate of the Maw has been in terror of the northern waters for decades now. Have been taken with every major navy from New Victoria to New California. Time and time again, they would raid up and down the coast, and for every ship sunk, three more would appear. The Hydra of Oregon was deemed not impossible to defeat until the United States Navy arrived on the scene. In a series of pitched battles, uh, America's brave and valiant soldiers and uh, sailors fought the dread pirates on the open ocean, even in daring boarding actions both on the United States naval vessels and the pirate ships of the Mall. Now, all the United States Navy remains with the bulk of the Port Mall pirate fleet sunk to the bottom of the cold northern Pacific, feasted upon by gold whales and occasional northern kraken. A spokesman for the Navy t said today, Let us be a lesson to any who wish to fight the Navy. Well, not quite until our shores are secured and our enemies vanquished from the Emerald o Oceans. They never stood a chance. If a news from the front, Battle of the Mall, Leonardo Willen reported... Reporting from the USS Navarro, the United States Navy has unleashed a devastating barrage against the defenders of the Port Mall. Most of the pirate and raider forces, already desperately trying to hold off against the advance of the United States Army, were annihilated in the bombardment. A few of their vessels tried to sail out and engage naval vessels in combat, only to be sunk by a combined force of naval guns and naval vertebrates. <clears throat> U.S. troops are expected to make a final push against the mod itself and bring an end to the Oregon Pirates once and for all. It's just business. And Tandy's teachings. The answer is one of the largest successor states on the West Coast, carrying on traditions of the old world, despite being a rebel government occupying American lands, was started out as an honest attempt at creating civilization dev uh, devolved rapidly. Politicians, wealthy barons, and a loose cannon military industrial complex, in short, the exact same that we had just prior to the Great War, and they did it in half the time. Those who had power quickly centralized in the hands of the few for profit, and those who could, looted their power with reckless abandon. Even when we took California, we felt the sting of the Brahmin barons and were forced to deal with them accordingly. The NCR shows exactly why trying to repeat the old world would just lead to the very same mistakes. Enshrine tangent reforms in the Constitution. Patricia Ramon knows that the government is in charge. Democracy no longer functions in this world. The NCR failed because they were the NCR. I'll go with Tandy's legacy. What is this? Virtual reality training. We have the technology, but implementing it across the army would be given our army exponential experience of training. From Normandy to the Berlin Wall, Anchorage, and Navarro, our soldiers will learn the history and train the same battles that define their legacy. Cool. As we are doing uh, so one of the other ones here. I can't remember. What's going on nowadays? I don't know. And as you can see over here, we have set up our guys to unleash complete hell on the enemies. Which should be fun to do. I'm a little worried that we might not be able to take them out. And there we go. I don't think they got many divisions though. How many divisions they got? Up to 20. That's not bad actually. I need you guys to get, just get on the line, though. As soon as we capitulate these guys, we're going to launch uh, the invasion up there, too. Uh, burst fire? That's going to call it cyclic fire. Uh, soft attack. Oh, let's get more breakthrough and heart attack. Why not? Doggos. And Capitol Hill will fall soon, hopefully. Capitol Hill has fallen. Giant Mountain Complex, no rap. <clears throat> Our return to Colorado is another stepping stone in the reclamation of America. However, in the mountainsides, outside Colorado Springs, are the corners of our National Defense Network, the North American Aerospace Defense Compound, or no rap. It was here that the Air Force watched vigilantly against any would-be Chinese attack and coordinated accordingly. Coordinated accordingly. It's also here that we laid the plans for the reclamation of America with a calculator. Now we return, and one of the first things we've noticed was the fact that the door to the facility had been blown off, and there still remains a battle between strange robots and the Brotherhood of Steel. We we'll won't exactly know what happened until we get the base back up and running. Let's get that place back up and running. Marine Corps reborn. Duty, honor, Semper Fi, Frank Horgan. While we won't see any large scale amphibious landings, Marine gunners aboard our ships. Uh, the doctrine in crossing rivers will greatly benefit us as we push west. North Korea taking an array, look at that. We raided the raiders, poetic justice. What is this? Deploy the cannons. 
makeshift bridges. Cool. So we should have them then, right? We've landed literally all over the place here. How much more can Broken Coast really take? And we've literally landed in every major area here. We've even landed over here too. Think of anything we got. Good. Um, I want to send you guys down here too. These guys are a giant freaking mess for us. Go ahead. Fine. Go do that. Cool. Can you guys come to here as well. Drop from here. Fort Nelson. Oh god. Yeah, you know, I thought we would have enough, but obviously not. Broken Coast has got a lot of cores. I really thought it would be enough. Clear water. One more should be more than enough. There you go. Go when you can. Good. Liberation of Seattle. The sun rises <clears throat> over Seattle and back in American hands. For the first time in 200 years, the Brotherhood's headquarters of the Space Needle has been toppled by an airstrike, and surviving members of the cause are helping track down the Brotherhood at holdouts. And while the Broken Ghost has asked for terms, the only thing they'll give them are more bullets. On a flagstaff, which we've already taken. Uh, Russian Brotherhood is not so immortal after all. We can only wonder what the mortal's thinking after a seat in power in Seattle. The United States Army continues to make advances towards the legendary pre-war city as the Air Force and Navy, Navy patrol uh, cold skies and icy waves. Many of the immortals' best commanders lay defeated in a land that stretches from the ruined city all the way to the Columbia River and beyond. Many are theorizing that the immortal will try and escape the former chapter of the Midwest Brotherhood, but just as many are speculating that it will make a final stand in Seattle protecting its dark foundry, which we can only speculate what that is. Broken Steel and American Might, the feared Seattle chapter, uh, base, Seattle based chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, has seen their status laid low as American Army forces continue their push into the cold Washington wasteland. Frontline reports show that while Washington Brother Paladins remain a threat, much of their main fighting force are slaves or conscripts given cheap weapons and sent into the cold. Most, if not all, are shackled with state collars, resulting in one barbaric attack where a wave of enslaved knights charged at an army position, resulting in vicious close quarters combat before the collars were all detonated. Such is the horror that comes out of Seattle. We'll be in Seattle soon enough. Uh, news from the front, the fighting continues through Seattle. Dwight Sullivan from Capitol Hill, uh, United States troops have entered the capital of Washington Brotherhood, Seattle. Despite the setbacks, the Washington Brotherhood continues to mount desperate resistance. Uh, capitol Hill has been transformed into a veritable fortress, where the immortals are believed to reside. The Space News even transformed into a laser artillery platform, although it was soon destroyed in an airstrike. Although things look grim for the Washington Brotherhood, it appears. They are determined to fight to the last man. It's almost like they have something important to defend the sky. Or defend in the city. I should be. Oh god, I can't even read, can I? Uh, is this a, the so-called Dark Foundry? Good. Just help them out, and by helping them out, I mean kill them. God, I think they're down here too. That's annoying. Again, we need attack. Well, that kind of sucks. Nice. There you go. 
I'm just slaughter them all. Home in the mountains. Uh, sitting high in Idaho, mountain uh, home was primarily a fighter base in the lead-up to the Great War and became one of America's two fighter shields against Chinese air attacks during the Great War. Regardless, that mountain gave its namesake sheltered it from the Great War. Uh, though the intervening years did not. Crumbling infrastructure, scavenging from the surrounding locals, and the harsh climate made the base quite the effort to repair. Regardless, the base is operational and ready to receive fighters once again. Of course, once again, fly goes fly. There we go. That should be the end, right? For the love of God, it should be the end. There we go, thank god, Jesus Christ, that took way too long. And then these guys are gonna probably wanna fight us for it, but whatever. There we go, thank god, Jesus. Oh boy. Oh my god, how many things do we have in repair? These guys are spreading out like literal cancer. What are you doing here? Did I not give you orders? I'm more certain that I did give you orders. Hmm. Here's an idea. Like, focus on one landmass at a time. But no, we can't have nice things like that. Support cause partisans. There's that one. Sailor's life. There are many reasons to join the Navy. The call of the Emerald Sea. The better chance of not being killed by a jet addict. The chance to see the world. Maybe even find a crack in a storm of a pirate ship. And that's in the Navy today. Some have brought us. Saving strand, saving stranded ships from bad storms, fighting off giant monsters, attacking port towns, boarding pre-war hulks full of ghouls and horrors. Just another day in the Coast Guard. Mexican engineering. Robot parade, robot parade, wave the flags of the Enclave made. Robot parade, robot parade. Come on, god dang it. Robots obey what the Enclave say. Lapland Air Force Base. Overlooking the obvious reasons for the by the Brotherhood and then the Salmo chapter, Lapland Air Force Base was at one time the center for basic training for the United States. While well, the Brotherhood at the time had few numbers, training could be done on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and the airfield at Lapland was used primarily for aircraft maintenance and servicing. Like the Reborn Air Force we operate, which is many thousands of individuals, a centralized location for training would be instrumental in creating a unified and cohesive Air Force, just like the base did pre-war. Good, we need the space. Rebirth of the Marines, after the Great War, the military, was downsized much like the rest of the government. Branches were nothing more than pins on a uniform, and the Army taking the lion's share of roles. The Air Force was reduced to piloting vertebrates, the Navy operating what few ocean craft that were left, manning the automated systems defending the rig from anyone approaching. The Coast Guard were all but dissolving the Marines. The Marines fought tooth and nail to survive. Many of their numbers served alongside the Secret Service, acting as grunts on special missions. Others were in the likes of the Granite Company, who were in the primary defenders of the rig. President Grant remembered hearing the stories of his father, and he himself always felt he had a connection to the few and proud. It was his distant honor today at the headquarters of the former 1st Marine Division announcing the reactivation and expansion of the Marine Corps. An evolving process, Marine detachments will be parsed out to active units in the field to develop Marine tactics in a post-war wasteland. These units will gain experience needed to form cadres of future Marine officers and NCOs that eventually form the backbone of the Marine Corps. They're few but they're proud. Hey, Marine Army awesome. United the Tri-Cities, as we establish complete control over the upper confluence of the Yakima, Snake, and Upper Columbia Rivers, we can merge the Tri-Cities into one entity. The functions won already, now that there are no pesky state borders that would separate them anymore, they can fulfill the potentials won. Come and drive, I don't need that. Further store naval base, Kitsap. Once home in the northern half of the Pacific Fleet, while historically serving Navy submarines, we can retool much of the base repair surface fleet in the frozen waters of the northern Pacific. Northeastern, Northwestern Cause. Also known as the Cause. What would be remembered as the Northwestern Brotherhood was a breakaway from the cold darkness of the Washington Brotherhood. The cause resisted the Washington Brotherhood's tyrannical rule where others failed, holding true to some of the true ideals of the Brotherhood. While they put up a valiant fight, history overlooked the cause of the arrival of the American Army and the pacification of Washington and the Tamiya of Seattle. Regardless of the tales of the cause, were former captain in the tomes and records of the Brotherhood, many elder scribes and lost souls wish to consider them the Northwest Brotherhood. The true heirs of the North and hold their ideals to be lived up to long since the banished over Portland. They remain alight in the snowstorm, or darkness over Washington. Scourge of Seattle in the dark cold of uh, winter made manifest. 
led by the immortal, the Washington brother, to push the boundaries of science and ethics, sacrificing humanity, as well as allowed to Seattle. We notice how many were fed to the infernal machines in Seattle. Even our own purists who fled north were betrayed and sacrificed to pierce the veil of reality and uncover secrets never meant to be known. Perhaps it's best to close the dark chapter of the Brotherhood once and for all. May God rest our souls. Extend security solutions. Repairing no rads front door. Well, one time there was a reinforced vault tech blast door that's been blasted open. How? Oh. Cool. This is going to take forever. We must just pair up into them, right? Uh. Mazatlans. I can't even remember where the core states are anymore of these places. Southern Strike Power, Barksdale was a southern strategic bomber base. Though during the resource wars, its main mission was to scare Cuban into not entering the war on the side of the Chinese. Its strategic placement meant a prime target for Chinese nuclear strikes who wanted to destroy second strike capabilities and give Cuba an opening. Given the lack of Cuban flags, that plan failed. Since then, it's been abandoned. Given the uh, local terrain and still twitching defenses keeping most at bay, though our engineers still found a few places or pick clean of anything usable. But now the best serves a brilliant base for the Air Force for the, our operations of the American Southeast and the Caribbean in the near future. Let's see pirates deal with carpet bombing. Can we go? Come on, what are you doing? Get your butts down there now. What do you mean there's no land route available? Oh! I see. Here. Down here. Then you can lead that way. Should the AI not know what to do here? on the banks of the Rio with Texan arms. Former Air Training Command Base on the banks of the Rio Grande will primarily given over to train for the base furthering as a refueling point for peacekeeping missions in Mexico. Given a strange little importance to the Chinese, the base survived the war was even built up by the nearby Texas Armed Associations for their own attempts at creating an air force. When they weren't using it, of course, it was leased out to the Republic of the Rio Grande, who were happy to use a pre-war base for their own operations. Now that the base is back in our hands, it's slated for operations above Mexico and Texas, possibly further east in the Gulf of Commonwealth as we continue to march east. Cool. More output, yes, please. Marine armor is kind of cool. Thirty-five armor is not bad. It is what it is, but still, not bad. Excellent engineering is nice. Ah, Starlight Express for the war. Great war. This. Coast Starlight Railway connecting the cities of the West Coast. It can do so again. Fantastic. I like it. I like it a lot. Trebuchets. Some ships over there. Nice. The Corpse No More. After weeks of work, the Navy's proudly announced the clearing and renovation of the Corpus Christi Naval Base is complete. It was once a simple naval air station, expanded full on base from the resource wars. Post war, it apparently served as a nucleus for some anti human extremists with ties to the Red Jungle of Eden. 
Constructing a massive citadel to plants, the madman was stopped by the Brotherhood member Scarlet before she became a warden of Eden. Regardless, the massive green eyes has been torn down in the base harbor, dredge of anything that could prevent the navigation of ships. The Navy is eager to begin operations of the Gulf of Mexico, especially to defend against pirates arriving from South America and the Caribbean. What a strange episode. Further, store naval magazine in Indian Island. Free war munition storage, storage site on the north end of the Puget Sound was home to try the cell facilities as sacred. Well, it was, anyways. Hey, these guys did very well down here. Holy crap. How many have we lost? 31 versus 2,000, that's not bad, but still. Deposit Rams. There you go. Hey, sense security. That's no secret that the gun runners' monopolies caused concern among several caravan companies, small time owners, and even some within the army. The capture is Seattle, and likewise, sense security main headquarters and production facility that ends today by presidential mandate. At a ribbon cutting ceremony, the former Dark Brother of the city, sense security reopened its doors, manufacturing several ballistic weapons such as the R95, along with post war models for the voice centers on a budget. We'll take some time to regain a large customer base as the gun runners. In fact, they have lacked a customer base in the Pacific Northwest and are now forbidden from operating there until 2320 because of the restart up and edge in competition. Competition is good. Oh, you betcha. Makes us all better. Follow Chichen Itza. Oh, nice. By the next episode, we'll be able to take Oh, they took out all of Mexico. Nice. That'll make it super easy for us then. Further store JL JBLM. A massive pre-war installation that was home to both Army Forces and the Air Force and our forces in the Pacific Northwest. Rio Chode Air, Fire, Air Force Base, America's Northern Strike Center, lay in ruins from the war in Washington. Now it returned to its full mission capacity. Nice. Oh, USSSA Mission Control. But they recaptured Houston, so too we recaptured the Johnson Space Center. Restoring and linking it with our operations in Bloomfield allows us to launch additional missions to the stars and beyond. We're store, further store camp, really. Was well, once the U.S. Uh, Army heliport was turned over to the Marines and was the staging point for the Marines' Aleutian Island campaign. Fantastic. Douglas is going to become an expert negotiator. You betcha. Couch guns? I love guns. What American does not love guns? You don't love guns as American. Are you really American? Uh... Logistics, nice. More logistics, even nicer. We'll do a lot of robotics up too. Hey, how's it going? Almost defeated. Fan friggin' fantastic. Beautiful. Now, what do we do with the guys? Last American Army, there you go. Mexican Reclamation. Do Edgecito Mexicano. Lands of Mexican Reclamation. I want to give them all at one time, maybe. How about that? We'll keep it for now, but then we'll kill them all off, too. Who can we go to war against? Closing the front door. Oh, the order. First and foremost, was clearing the radiation around the front door and surrounding area. A uh, task made difficult since right away tends to freeze in cold climates. After clearing that, tearing out the old door was trivial and even stated it's somewhat to better reinforce it in the future. Putting it in was a simple engineering task that was done within a few days. Much of it was thanks to the in industry of the West Coast and we were able to ship it off out and got at last got the door sealed for the first time since it was blasted off, whenever that was. Well, we posted guards around and made the place look like an actual military facility once more. That said, much of the surrounding area to our... Uh, most vital installation in the central U.S. is a menagerie of mutants, monster activity, haywire rampaging robots, and Colorado Springs, which is starting to recover from when Atlantis' terror run through the region. Well, at least it's repaired. Sentinel of the North Pacific. Serving as our North Pacific Fleet Headquarters, Naval Base Kitsap serve to keep American submarines and carriers fueled, supplied, and families housed while operating in the North Pacific. It became the focal point for what became known as the Battle Beneath the Pacific against the Chinese submarine fleet during the resource wars, of course. That meant it was targeted by the Chinese nuclear bombardment that started the Great War. Thankfully, over 200 years after the Great War, we've been able to restore the base to operational capacity, including its massive fuel silos that were the hallmark of the base pre-war. Freedom Ahoy, once again. We're doing all these, but, uh, yeah. 
former Air Force Special Operations Base on the Texan New Mexico border. Enclave Sigma is very eager to bring it under control. Uh, what is this one? Restore the Operation Center. Dust, decay, radiation, and bodies. Literally, old Operation Center, as well as broken equipment. Cool. As you can see, we just set up a lot of our uh, strategic deployment or uh, pair dropping into basically these guys down here. And defenses are online. Good. How long is this going to take? 155 days. Oh my god. That's a lot. But we're doing our old Northern Dominion, of course. Have machine guns. Let time go on for now. Oh, right, what is this? We're building the Pacific Northwest. Let's dredge the harbors of Portland, clear the rubble of Sea Adams, restart Columbia Rivers dams, and take care of that super mean infestation. Or we could do something else. Mass oh, waste, mass of the wasteland, yeah. With the defeat of the Legion, the new California Republic, and the Washington Brotherhood. It's time to remind everyone that America's original motto is join or die. It's cancel it. Hello, folks. This is Mr. New Vegas, coming to you with a special report from the south of the border. With the creation of the Baja State, the true Edgercito de Mexico, has officially formed a crowd in the capital, La Quita. Or La Yaquita. Or La, ya, la Yaqui. Well, much uh, the army will, of course, be consistent. Uh, will be consistent. Life of mobile militias and freedom fighters. The core of the army will be centered around power armored regulars made up of volunteers from Californian refugees fleeing from Santa Ana's robot legions, outfitted with T-51B power armor, salvaged from the Brotherhood, and gifted by the Northern benefactors. This Guerrero de la Libertad will soon be fighting alongside U.S. Army troops and many others. With what many news outlets are reporting as the Pan American Alliance. That's the news, and I'm coming up. I've got a very special song for you. Siempre leales and good luck. We're gonna need it. They're gonna need it. Let's gather from Montana. Huh. Let them join. Cooper's gonna join us. Some dredgers become a federal commonwealth. Silex, New Victoria, past keepers. All you need is time. I got it on our side. Tribes of the magazine. What was once home to deep winter ammo, pier, and conventional ordnance storage side eventually became home to a series of tribal cultists who worshiped the former naval facilities. While the Olympus tribe tolerated, uh, the Brotherhood of Steel was not so tolerant of people who sat atop pre war munitions with technology. By arrival, the tribe who sat, uh, the tribe attempted to reestablish control over the magazine. Before we could even establish how many there were, they attacked our construction crews, prompting a response to saw them wiped out. Now that the curious episode is over, we managed to restore the magazine to working order and resupplying our naval forces in the Pacific. Well, this is different. Just a little bit. For the store of Vandenberg Air Force Base overlooking the Pacific. Vandenberg was America's testing facility for base ballistic missiles until it developed Hopeville Missile Base and converted into a strategic bomber. Uh, Installation, oh god, and a strategic air command. Nice. Sort of the sats up NPP, yeah. Joint Naval or Joint Base Lewis McCord. The massive military installation that is JBLM is not one but two military bases that were combined pre war to try and save on costs. The Army component of Fort Lewis was home to at least three American Army divisions and their families with infrastructure to serve all plus an additional four divisions that would rotate in for training for the resource wars. The Air Force component of the Accord Air Force Base served as a regional hub for operations heading north as well as a near echelon command for Alaska Strike Command. The years since then have not been kind, it's been picked clean. By post war scavengers and the airfield took a direct hit from a nuclear bomb, then there was a brotherhood. Thankfully, we managed to get the base up and running and acting as headquarters for operations in the Great White North. Wow, this place is huge. Fantastic. Northern Strike Package. Fairchild. Air Force Base was vital in the Alaskan Reclamation for the being the primary bomber striking center that rained hell upon the Chinese attempting to invade sovereign American territory. Its mission gained new meaning, targeting Canadian terrorists deep in the north, destroying much of the renegade Canadian government's holdout in the north and allowing America to gain the initiative. The battle between the old country and the rock purchase left the base in disarray. Both factions vied for control of the base and the required extra work to repair the fresh damage. Now, however, it's back under strategic air command's control and ready to continue the fight in the north. Fly goes fly, Marines at the mall. Former Army heliport. With defense funding tight due to the ongoing war in Alaska and soon to be opened up Chinese front, the Marines brokered a deal with the Army to turn over the old really out Army heliport to the Marines, exploiting a loophole in funding. The Marines were able to build up the post rapidly, and from there they successfully conducted the evolution campaign, cutting Chinese supply shipments to Anchorage in half. Both wars set derelict save a few scavengers, and with M Lewis McCord to the north distracting the Brotherhood instead, the Marines hoped to use it as a staging and training facility for operations in the north. And, ooh, and the continued patrols against the pirates that still infest the northern waters. Pirates beware, we have Marines. Main Operation Center, restore power. Find out what happened to the calculator. It was here that we, we were alerted of birds in the air on that fateful October morning of 2077. It was this very command room at 917 EST that confirmed that the first nuclear strikes in American soil destroying much of the West Coast. It was here where we knew the old world had ended. Even as what would become the Enclave rejoiced in the oil rig and elsewhere. Here dozens of Amer airmen and their officers watched helplessly as lights representing American cities flickered and died as billions of lives were snuffed out in an instant. A few of them were still in their seats, holes in their heads. 
Pistol stone of bony grass. Others lay dead near the door in a desperate attempt to get out and see loved ones once more, but died from radiation from the bombs that struck Colorado Springs. We've been so focused on reclaiming the United States, so busy retrusting or returning America to glory, and then we didn't stop and look at the remains we've been sifting through. It's a bit sobering. There is a story here, a somber one, of the men and women who watched the world end and who could do nothing to stop it, help us as a hubris the old world ended everything. The ravages of time have made identifying who is difficult, or who is who is difficult. We'll identify them through their duty logs, and while we can piece together from their uniforms, we'll give them a proper burial and a monument detailed in their names. They watched the world end, my god. Qu question of Canada. Canadian sovereignty is a question on the policymakers. Many see Canada as much as the United States as death claws and apple pie. Others argue that they were illegally annexed by war-hungry power, a war-hungry American regime. The debate is raging heavily in the Congress, also known in America's had apple pie for over two years. Return to the Broken Coasts. The Victorian Coast? What is this? The United States Broken Coast Administration Reconstruction Authority from firmly handed a control of the Broken Coast to the representatives of Her Majesty's Royal Victorian Government today. The event was given much fanfare in the former headquarters of the USB CARA in North Coover, where a grave in once ran as Raider Empire. The Victorian Coast Restoration Society is officially taking over the reins while the USBCRA is having its efforts refocused elsewhere on the continental United States. <clears throat> the Royal Army is taking the forefront of this operation, backed by the industrial and agricultural power to ensure readily available food and medicine in the former Raider territory. The Canadian Crown set foot on the mainland. Send delegates to the Raiders. Oh, so we lost all that and gave it to, North gave it to them. Send Royal Delegation. I guess we did that. Question Canada. We'll get that one later, too. Here, finally out of Navalx. Look at that. Go figure. Hey, about a cruiser. Dredger says chosen war. Oh, crap. Mr. President, the question Queen's regrettably sent word that the Dredgers has not only refused the royal delegation of union, but it's threatening violence to the President of Queen of Canada. Oh, crap. Is it ever returned to the sovereign borders? Despite the Queen's well wishes, the OLP has chosen to face the royal army head on. As per our agreement, Canadian forces are beginning our combat operations, and our forces are standing by waiting your orders. Victorian Union with Coover. Mr. President, the Queen has happily informed us that Coover has accepted the royal delegation of union, extending a hand in union and friendship. Queen is expected to visit Coover Capital and grant the title of provincial governor to the Winterborn as a sign of good faith and eventual prosperity. Canadian forces are beginning to distribute goods and conduct security patrols and now acquiring U.S. forces for the time being. Commence operations. Well, we'll see what happens. And we'll join the war, I guess, but still. They have Olympus tribes, so yeah. Puppet. All right, well, whatever. Operation Domino, Eastern Nevada, and Utah is often described as a powder gate, however. And let us know if we upset the balance of the tower, let's come tumbling down. Yeah, pretty much. Logistics, nice. Maintenance, good. Is that Alex Nation? Well, I mean, we were technically annexing all these guys anyway, so I don't think there's a really big point to it. Oh, wait. Because we've got our own fish to fry here, too. Just a crap ton of cast. And. Only 1,500 fighters, huh? Is that all you got? Cool. I want them to all the divisions be at the forefront first. I'm going to do it. Operation Domino. He's having control of Nevada and out of the Utah wasteland. Anarchy is a lot of the land. What little arable land to start a settlement is either brought into the rubber tires of the 80s or raised by the white legs. Both of them are massive threats to our plans. And render our position here in the new region continuous at best. We'll have to deal with them sooner rather than later, especially if one of them end up allying with one of our enemies in the region. But that doesn't say anything about New Canaan. Compared to the other two, they're a beacon of civilization in a lawless wasteland. We can negotiate with them, but there's no guarantee they'll want to submit to lawful government authority after all these years. Kneecap the white legs. The White Legs see themselves as the prospects to join Kaiser's Legion. When that opens up a threat to all of Nevada, they want to move west. We must be ready to face them. The Great White North. The Northern Command Wealth, or Northern Command, Northern Commonwealth holds power within its vast wealth and power. A power and wealth we can use to our born country. They're attacking us, we're attacking them. We're going to pair drop and kill them all off. That's always the plan, right? Schneike is the fastest war we've ever had so far on this channel. No, I'm just kidding, probably not. We lost 402 versus 600. Look at that. How easy that was. fan freaking tastic my friends. Almost a three quarters of a million manpower. Of course, in my calculations, it's never enough, but whatever. And we're going to annex them. Look at that. fan freaking tastic Come on, the war's over. 
think that's good too. Can we end the war, please? We literally just capitulated them. That was way faster than I thought it would be. But that was awesome. This might destroy us, but send curious of air parents. I read remainders. Sure. So the next episode, we'll go to War of the White Legs. And the Mexican Reclamation. Five days. Let's see what this one's like. Great Canadian border debate. Now that it learns not to pronounce Canadria, we'll come up with another problem. Apparently, this is going to be like Mexico. But what's more, is people have up in arms over straight lines. It just can't be done. Oh, oh now they're all puppets of us. So in the end, it doesn't matter. So they can't kill each other off yet. Cool. Mexican Reclamation. Mexican Reclamation Zones lodged formal request for us to return Mexican lands to their administration. Well, there's nothing less of a shower of thanks and support for our assistance in the land of the Titan. There are several within the Mexican Reclamation Zones wanting to get on the rebuilding of Mexico without having to constantly require permission from the U.S. military administration in the region. Meanwhile, some members of the Congress question our latest military appropriations. There's also been rumors of unrest among the Mexican population who started to sour the notion that they treated up patrols for Tlaloc robots and the flower wars for power armors soldados and leaders who don't always speak Spanish. Mexican Reclamation can have their lines back, but they have to pay. They can't risk a unified power to our south. Uh, there you go. Oh, that's going to like it. So I'm going to end it here. In the next episode, you're going to see Mexico, and we'll go to War of the White Legs. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as I continue on with the Enclave. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.